Hello, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to talk about horse manure, the power of horse manure and how you can get results like this, beautiful carrots with very little work using horse manure which costs nothing most of the time. So stay with me. Hello, I'm here by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, beautiful spring Nova Scotia and then today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. I'm going to talk about garlic. So here we have a wonderful bed of carrots that I planted last April, first week of April. And in the previous fall, I put down about four inches of horse manure here. And uh, I did a video last early June where I was showing you how I dealt with all the weeds. If you put straight horse manure down, whether it's been aged or not, to a large extent anyway, you're gonna get weeds because horses uh, eat weeds and they poop out weeds and the weeds grow really well. So I have some video footage of me uh, dealing with those weeds and it was a bit tedious but I'd say in total the amount of time I spent on this beautiful bed of carrots probably took I'd say two hours in total so two hours in this 4x10 uh, bed of carrots is all the energy I put into it this year um, I planted them and I weeded it um, and that's it uh, so that's not bad for you know, basically a summer's supply and a fall supply and well into winter supply of carrots. A 4x10 garden give you a lot of carrots if you space the rows. My rows go this way, uh, perpendicular to the length of the box, uh, about seven or eight inches apart. So it's, it's just solid carrots. Um, when you got that much nutrient in the soil, they have no problem growing there. And uh, the trick is you have to thin them. If you want big ones, big fat ones like the ones I showed at the beginning there, you have to thin them, which is fine because you get to eat them when you thin them. You wait till they're a size and it all dovetails nicely. You, you let them just grow until they're edible size and then you start uh, picking them out in a way that uh, promotes the remaining ones to grow. You're just finding space for the remaining ones. Uh, so you're eating and thinning at the same time. So you're really, that's not work in my opinion, that's harvesting, which is different than the work that goes into growing a garden. Um, is the garden perfect? That is to say, are there no weeds in it? Uh, no, there's still some weeds and I'll show you, when I get a little closer into the garden, I'll show you there's some weeds still came back. Um, but the weeding I did in June allowed the carrots to really take over the space and, you know, be the the big winners <laughs> where the soil nutrients are concerned there's still some weeds in there uh, but let's have a little closer look here at uh, the kind of carrots we got growing in here I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here I don't know how well that can be seen right about there I guess You get in here, and there there's some weeds. I mean, that's that's grass. This <laughs> is growing there. Uh, when I'm done harvesting all of these carrots, and I will harvest them all in November, and we just put them in cold storage, and these carrots from this area, this space here, will you know provide us with all the carrots my family is going to eat uh, well into uh, February or March, or maybe even beyond. Depends on how many carrots we eat. But despite the fact that there's some still some weeds in here, um, I got some nice carrots. I mean, that's a nice big fat carrot. That's a little stubby one. That one went a little weird. Oh, that's a nice carrot there. The variety here is uh, Imperator carrots. Uh, they make a nice long tapered uh, carrot, and they taste good. Right. Whoa, there's a weird shape. That happens. There's a nice one there. But to me, this is about as close to perfect as I can get. I don't measure perfection in 
how my uh, produce appears or um, also uh, the extent to which the garden is completely weed free. Uh, perfection for me is measured in, in terms of the ratio of effort put in to yield achieved. Um, so two hours dealing with fresh horse manure, you know, most of that time you know, it probably took about 20 minutes to plant all the seeds and I just walked away. Uh, you plant these things in early uh, April, uh, it's a rainy time of year anyway, so you don't have to worry about going out and watering them. The, the, the water comes out of the sky, in this, this part of the world anyway, uh, and deals with all of that. Look at that one, what a beauty. Right? So you just get lots of carrots. Um, so, for me, this is the way to go. Horse manure costs nothing. In addition to that, once I finished weeding it, I put about a two inch layer of spoiled hay from the same stable where I got the horse manure. Uh, you know, if you go to a horse manure, they've got uh, horse manure, or if you go to a horse stable, they'll have horse manure. But usually there's also lots of hay on the manure pile because there's hay that just, for whatever reason, the horses won't eat it, they don't like it. Um, because it, it's spoiled and it got too wet or something like that, and they just throw that on the horse manure pile. The, the horse stable, they can't use that for anything. Uh, or even the hay that they, uh, if they use hay for bedding, the hay they bed the horses in, it's great stuff, it's full of horse pee and horse poop and all kinds of stuff, but it's full of nutrients. Um, so, again, all the resources, this whole garden bed, aside from the wood I bought years ago, uh, didn't really cost anything because I, I sourced the manure for free. And you get nice big old carrots, right? Are they all big like this? No, I mean in some of the other rows they're small because um, I didn't thin those as actively as I did this particular row. So, I'll show you. I apologize for the wind here, it's a bit of a pain. Um, zoom back out a bit here. So if we look at this bed here, um, I really haven't thinned this very actively. So of course the, the carrots are quite as you know big and beautiful. It's still a nice carrot. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. There's a, there's a big old. You know, if I do, I, I really don't do any weeding this time of year. Um, when I have a weed like this. I pull it because it's got it's it's developing seeds, and I don't want those seeds in my garden. So I will pull something like that, fire it off in the woods. I'm lucky here; I got a woods to fire things into. Um, but yeah, if you look in this row here, which there's a lot of weeds in, but some of the carrots aren't uh, uh, champions by any stretch of the imagination. I'm trying to get an example of that. Hard to pull because of all the grass, and you know I'm amazed at how well. The carrots have gotten along with the grass. And there's a kind of weird looking one there. Still very edible, still sweet, still good. Um, let's see another one here. Another little guy. So not as big as the other ones, but I haven't thinned this row. Right? I just didn't get around to it. That's fine. I got plenty of carrots. Plenty of, plenty of carrots to go around. But despite all of these weeds, there's a lot of weeds here, um, which all came in after I weeded it, which is a bit frustrating. I still got a lot of carrots. So, this is all horse manure. This garden was horse manure, but I didn't put any down this, uh, the previous fall. This garden over here, which is parsnips, is just running on the manure I added the previous year. Four inches of horse manure should give you, you know, two, at least two years of phenomenal productivity. Um, and that's assuming you're putting a mulch over it, some sort of thing, wood chips, hay, leaves, whatever, whatever you can source. Um, my entire garden here, Oh, how well I can pan around. This whole garden was the existing soil was just basically clay and rock and uh, really poor stuff. Uh, if you just look over here, and sorry for the wind, but this big hill is just this hard clay rock type stuff and that's what I had down here. When the developers were working in this area, they just left that stuff all over the place. So it, it wasn't good soil at all. It was just weeds, you know, just the kind of soil dandelions and weeds want to grow in. 
So every, I covered the whole thing with uh, cardboard, put the wood chips down to keep the cardboard in place and kill the weeds. And then when I want a garden space, just like I showed in a previous video, I just define it some way using you know, rocks or, or wood. And then put some horse, a few inches of horse manure down and plant and off you go. Now I have had better results using uh, things like uh, uh, chicken manure. Um, this pheno sorry. Oh. Um, this phenomenal, uh, it's sort of past its best point now, but uh, let me get a better angle on that. Sorry for this being all shaky. Um, this was a cucumber garden. All I, I mean, this was originally all horse manure years ago, but last fall all I did here was put a bucket full of chicken manure. So a bucket about that size, right? Uh, I don't know what that holds about. Oh, six or seven gallons. Um, so I just put a bucket that size of chicken manure on this four by eight bed uh, in the fall. I do all that work in the fall. I don't do any soil preparation type work in the spring, or it's rare. It's very rare that I do. Um, just do that in the fall. And uh, what happens over the course of the winter is that the you know all the nutrients that are in that manure just get pushed down by the snow and the rain and that sort of stuff and uh, it just sort of works its way into the soil. No tilling needed. So when I do harvest all these carrots, I'll pull all the weeds out. Because the soil is so soft, it's not compacted because I had a mulch on it, um, I'll pull all the weeds out too. They'll come out very easily. Maybe I'll do a video on that. And I just take all those weeds I pulled, put them in a bucket, and then I'll dig a hole in the garden and throw the weeds in the hole. And for the most part, they'll just rot and become worm food and fertilize the garden. And that's an interesting, uh, sorry for this wind. That's an interesting point. You know, a lot of people have these compost bins and they do composting. And I've got composting stations that are increasingly becoming more like cocoa culture beds. Um, I found that it's not a good use of your time. Uh, if you've got material in your garden that's weed like, um, you can put it in a box or a container until you've got a certain amount and you run over with your mower and you just throw it back on top, right? When I'm, you know, when I'm harvesting plants, if I see a weed, I'll pluck it. If there's seeds on that weed, of course, I'll, I'll toss the, the seeds and the flowers off into the forest or put them somewhere else. But anything that's green or organic in nature, um, I'll just wait till I have a good pile of those weeds and then I just run over them with the mower and throw them back on top of the garden, sheet mulching. Um, in the fall here, when I dig these up, because the, because these weeds will have so much soil in with them, I don't want to lose that soil. So I'll just dig a hole and bury them back in the ground, and they'll just rot and go away. For me, that's a much easier way to compost because I'm cutting I'm cutting out the middleman, right? I'm putting the compost right where I want it to go. I don't have to put it somewhere else and then turn it over and do this and do that and then bring it back. You don't need to do any of that, um, and you can do that if you want to if you enjoy that but it's, it's unnecessary um, to a large extent. Um, and it saves you time to just stick it in the ground where all your worms are and everything else. You, you want those worms in your soil. You want them doing their thing in your soil. That what's, that's what makes your soil or your garden a, a no-till garden, right? The worms and the other organisms in the soil, they're doing the tilling. Also the ants, there's ants in there and they're moving around making tunnels and pathways and stuff like that. They're moving stuff around and it just takes care of itself and you don't need to do any of that. Um, Another thing about carrots, I just thought since I was here, um, right up until, the reason I leave them in the ground for so long is because i got no place to put them. And my garage gets cool in the fall, so I can use it for cold storage. But another good reason not to pick them, only pick them when you want to eat them, is that they, uh, they don't need to be peeled. If you take a carrot like this, and uh, just have a brush, and you give it a good Good scrub. And it doesn't need to be uh, peeled. You don't need to peel that. That's that's ready to go. That's ready to eat. Right? So it makes sense to just leave them in the ground until you want them. They keep the ground just becomes like your own grocery store and they're ready to go. And that's a lot easier than peeling them and doing all that sort of stuff. And also you get the nutrients that are in the peel. You say, oh my god, you grew that in horse manure. Yeah, but you know, I put the horse manure down last fall, and by this time of year, it's really not horse manure anymore. It's kind of turned into soil, right? 
any soil that's productive is rotten something, unless it's just dead, unless the soil is just dead, lifeless, uh, you know, uh, and matter that has nothing in it that you're adding fertilizers to, and that sort of thing. But any other kind of soil that's productive, it's just basically full of decaying stuff. Uh, so who cares what kind of decaying stuff it is? Um, you wash it, you run it under the tap, and it becomes nice and clean. Ready to go. Delicious. Sorry, I, I had to switch to voiceover. The wind was just insane, and uh, the remaining footage of this video was atrocious. Uh, I apologize for the, uh, the, the footage on this video where it gets windy. I'm sorry about that, uh, but that's just, it's just working with, with what I got here. Um, if you want to have really productive gardens and you want to source the uh, soil amendments or even soil, you can use horse manure. You can plant right in it uh, as long as it's aged a little bit. Uh, I would recommend going with horse manure because it's very, very, very inexpensive. Um, but I would put it on in the fall because it's just easier to deal with it that way. You put it down in the fall and uh, it just sits there all winter and uh, in, in the spring, yeah, some weeds are going to get up, but there's, gonna, there's ways to deal with it. You can tediously pick them all like I did in this particular garden. I, I didn't have to do that for my entire garden here, but um, another way to deal with it is just um, where you've put the horse manure down. You don't till it in, you just put it down. Um, you uh, cover that whole area with newspaper and you cut slits in the newspaper with scissors or a knife or whatever you've got. Where you, when I say newspaper, I say like two or three layers of newspaper. Um, you cut slits where you want your rows to go and you put your seeds in those slits and the, the carrot seeds will come up through those slits and all the weed seeds that are in the horse manure will be growing elsewhere and they won't be able to push through the paper and they'll die and rot and uh, also you got to put some sort of mulch to hold the uh, newspaper down. Um, but uh, the weed seeds, the, the weeds that germinate will not be able to push through the paper and they'll die. And also the uh, uh, newspaper will just uh, break down and feed the worms. And that's an easier way to do it. I didn't do it in this particular garden. I should have because it takes about 10 minutes for a garden space that large to deal with newspaper. And that's a lot easier than spending over an hour weeding. Anyway, if you enjoyed this content, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, check us out on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and uh, check out our podcast, podcastmaritimegardening.com. Until next time, uh, thanks for watching.